Hello team and welcome everyone. Um, so what we're going to focus today is the weekend training. And this would be spread across the eight hours. Right from today from 10 a.m. PST. To uh, 2 p.m. PST. And uh, tomorrow again, both Saturday and Sunday. So before we get started into a team, a uh, lot of things from a house <clears throat> management perspective uh, that I would love to mention. Uh, making sure my audio is good for everyone and you can see my screen, just a notepad as of now. Can I get your feedback on the chat team? So you can interact with me at any time uh, through the chat. Okay, great. All right, great, fantastic. So team, um, the whole focus this weekend is to get a great grip on automation. So we're talking about automation and uh, we're talking about how we move from manual to automation. But at the same time, I want this to be focused specifically for people who are more non hands on QA slash automation leads slash managers and so on team. Now, what do I mean to say by that? So anyone who you see you are accountable for deliverables of a certain size team, you have, um, you know, a lot of um, you're you have to constantly ensure that um, your team is skilled and delivering to the latest market so we don't want to continuously use heritage tools and so on you also want to have at the same time the fear that you are not hands-on so you basically rely mostly on um, what your team says and that's absolutely critical team so the whole intent of this weekend training is to get you a holistic idea on manual to automation, why and how we can really move, you get to be able to see executions of various automation frameworks. And these, um, along with all the um, I'm sorry, one second team, the few members. Anyone has questions so far? And team, while that's going on from a housekeeping standpoint, I just want to make sure that we are aware there's four hours today. So we are 12th October, uh, Saturday. The way we'll do team, 10 a.m. to about 11.15 or 11.20 we will do one session. This is all specific time that I'm speaking about and we will go through a few topics team. I do not want to crush you with all the topics right away, uh, but we will I'll definitely list all the topics that we would cover. So in the next 10 minutes, I would primarily be able to finish with the orientation on what we are trying to do and why you're here. And we will get into the subject very quickly team. We want to do a lot of hands on in this session. I at least to see and understand critically. So when your team implements, you're not um, absolutely an unknown. OK, you know what? I trust by what you say because I don't understand anything beyond. Uh, and then let's continue again from 1130 AM to almost about um, 1245 if possible. And then we'll do 1 PM to 2 PM for the day. And the same we'll do tomorrow team. Now, 
do note this training is free for all JPAC and IT eLearn members. Okay. And even if you're not, even if not leading a QA team, please attend or watch the videos as um, you would get good insight into your future because as you migrate as you successfully build your career team you would be getting more into where uh, and how you position yourself how long would you be there let us say as a manual tester maybe two years three years in your career and then you'll say i want to add automation tools so you'll then have about five six years with three years automation two years manual and as you get into agile team management team building you would do more and more about your team now um, what is important is get insight into your career and what is it that we will look at because we will cover a lot of things team around perspective of you know I'll just call this as QA management okay like the way we want to look at things the way we would want everyone to start looking at um, deliverables all the way that goes back to the requirements in an agile process saying that this is how we have a good control on the whole thing so the topics that we will cover today will be from their perspective that if a team is executing any of these things on be it selenium or any other automation tools team as of now for the weekend we're going to focus on selenium with java and we will do a little bit of eclipse oh, sorry eclipse will of course be there um, we will be getting into ci cd with the concept of Jenkins plus GitHub, maybe a little bit Maven as well. So you would understand the entire build process. We will not do too much and let me not get into topics team or what we will do and what not. Uh, just keep an eye on the perspective that we will do a lot of code walkthrough of how these programs run. So let me kind of launch my Eclipse in the meanwhile. So what I want to focus team is in terms of automation, estimation, uh, ERA analysis. How do we make sure that it is efficient reusable accuracy and deployment comma reporting these become absolutely critical for someone who's playing an automation lead or manager role team so in your entire devops or ci cd cycle uh, while you may have about five people two people or 25 30 members in your team who are doing this you would need to do a constant amount of estimation and we just not saying automation estimation or manual but let us say that it is an integrated hybrid so i will say qa slash automation you need to do something called as an era analysis era is my three thumb rules that i keep promoting when we do any kind of an automation and that is efficiency so let me put it our automation frameworks need to be efficient they need to be reusable and they need to be accurate so the whole training as we go along i'll keep emphasizing on the fact of are things really efficient are we building on reusability and is it really accurate that we can rely for it to tell us what is right and wrong so that is very very critical team keep this in the back of the mind at this point there is nothing much to mention uh, apart from the fact that um, uh, on the we can get into the training but just the fact that your itln membership is their team so 
uh, if you are a member currently ongoing lifetime access or a premium member any of these um, you're more than welcome to continue with this training i would want to repeat this training do this once a month and team this has been cause constantly been requested by a lot of members for the last um, you know i've been doing training for the last 10 years so and they've been requesting it has only been me that okay you know what um it's too much on a weekend for me to take it i would want to spend time with the family but then the recent push that has come from my org team workasa.com um, we're going very very aggressive into qa automation i'm not talking about aggressive in terms of uh you know just acquiring new clients and so on i'm talking about project implementations we are very serious about what we do in the software test automation vertical so if you have not got an introduction about this then very quick uh, vercasa.com is the incorporation i've been in los angeles personally since 2005 i've um, got it learn initially as qtp learn started in 2008 9 time frame it's been over a decade team uh, been training constantly you will find us a lot on youtube as well uh, but we have a very specific segment of uh, followers and students you will not see and this is the first time that we have actually done a facebook ad uh, to because i wanted to reach more and more qa leads managers to come network as well along with this training so i would really seek um, a little bit of your take things slow and easy and i know it is um it's effort for both of us right eight hours in two days but let's look at the brighter side all right is over the weekend you have upgraded your skills and when you get to the office maybe on monday you're a little different because your exposure is there and even if you are going to be a new member team uh, who's someone who's going to start today you would not only get exposure to what is happening here but on a slow gradual learning place you have the memberships that will help you to uh, decide so there's a three months one year lifetime access for all that we do as video and live content and there's the jpact two-year membership so these are the access periods and so on team the only one which has a different access um, just to make sure that you all know it learn three months one year and lifetime access they're all the same they give you the content whatever you get on online courses except for the live projects and certifications and the placement program so that is where the content here for jpac members um, is much more advanced so you could choose any of these and get going uh, but please do note i will be taking this off team i've been mentioning but there have been so many discussions so many members uh, getting in so once uh let's put it like free for all and here members only so if you're someone who's looking to continue please take that next 15 minutes to do it so maybe we will use a new go to webinar link for it okay so that's just the housekeeping i wouldn't uh, bother too much team but what we will do then we will continue again on 13th october and we will do a lot of things as it goes um, i want to keep one open um, an open agenda can i say all right all i'm saying is If we do not cover certain topics, we will do um, again for those. And will it be live or videos? Don't worry, team. Let's try and acquire knowledge. And please do understand, this is a program. It is not like a typical, um, you know, like for us, YouTube 
or stack overflow or how we use google to search and learn are bits and pieces or udemy to learn specific concepts maybe but when it comes to the whole thing where it links directly to your career and you can interact with it that is where i focus on so we go very very hands-on um the whole of course it starts with a uh, important note that um, we will look at things from a 10,000 feet level. Maybe no, a thousand to 5,000 feet level team. So this is mid level. What is high level? High level is about 30,000 feet. We talk about more like aeroplane distance and view. When you're flying at 30,000 feet, everything looks small. You don't have attention to detail unless you have a good enough lens to zoom in. But as you go down to 10,000 feet, you're getting more closer to the ground reality. And in this case, we are saying not only the earth, but our IT project. And as you get closer, you have more insight. So we want you to get deeper into understanding what is this whole crux of Selenium, Java, Eclipse, automation frameworks? Why are people going crazy about this? And most importantly, I want to talk about why automation projects fail and industry is right now they're you know twice bitten thrice shy so it's not once bitten twice shy thing so they've gone through this and they want things that can be really implemented and when i say implemented team it is not about complicating coding or frameworks. I see a couple of uh, questions, I believe. I'm gonna take your questions in a minute, team. Let me just finish this. Let me erase this drawing. Let me see. Uh, ting, 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 ting. So team, um, from a look, participation and so on i'll have to create a new list so let me give me some time i'll focus on the training let's keep going on it um, as long as you remember don't worry I'll, I'll take care of it worst case give me a call or write an email to me um, let me continue with the session about where we're focusing and then i want to get kick started all right everyone now uh implemented um so what are we talking about so um why automation project fail what well, projects fail so implementation failures team implemented how who why so you know these questions become very important so complicated coding or frameworks cause some people are saving their jobs they don't want it to uh, come up versus where there is more openness did I spell it correct? Is that even a word in English? Openness to get non-coders to participate. And this is the biggest priority that every QA leader has team. How can I get my QA, which is manual, to work a lot on automation too? And I would be honest, team, one of the first reasons that a QA leader will look at is to motivate them. And they, it, they would genuinely feel that it would improve their career. And there are things that they need to learn. Why? How long will you sit in manual? Why don't you get into the automation? Why don't you learn? And they want you to really get exposed. But at the same time, whole automation ci cd flow but then um you understanding what i'm trying to mention team are is everyone with me in the conversation we're kind of talking about what we're going to focus where we're going in this and how we look at things as we um look at our roles as a qa leadership any questions at this point
sorry okay all right team um so what we're talking about is how can i get the qa team you are a leader you want you your team to start working on them but at the same time automation frameworks are not typically user friendly and one of the simplest reasons why all is coded in and this is where we will learn to differentiate and all is coded in and unless you know coding gets tough to maintain your QA regression suite in Java that becomes the challenge team and you want would like to be able to what am I saying next all is coded in unless you know and um, the challenge starts now team with this kind of um, approach so let me quickly open up my workspace for um, I wanted to take a previous training and do a good walkthrough there are two of them there's one that's coming up so I just switched the workspace it should come up um, and I'll we'll talk about team QA leader how can I get automation frameworks are not typically user friendly all is coded in unless you know coding gets tough to maintain in QA to maintain QA regressions within Java and where is my okay there we are all right so this is a lot of content so now all I'm saying team is if a non programmer has to look at things and which goes a little deep into okay all my scenarios are out here and each time I need to do some kind of uh, scenario management I need to come and do this is a challenge so for non and this is where we want to build that exposure what truly goes behind that buzzword automation all right and when we talk about automation we do not have to necessarily talk about just um, uh, you know testing automation it can be industry automation um, it can be any kind of an automation robotic process automations and so on team but we are more towards automation testing so I'll just keep, keep that common all right um, any questions let me now talk about automation testing and how we want to get there team that's fine good for now so um, in our world of testing software testing I would want to put things into two perspectives one is manual testing and then we have the automation testing so the primary difference of how can we be able to differentiate these activities and that is what I was trying to mention I believe in that earlier point all that we focused is how do we move or keep understanding each of these teams in a strong way let's take a typical scenario team there are let us say let us assume that about um, a QA team a pyramid of QA team where there is one QA manager then there are about one lead plus two automation engineers and let us say there are about 15 manual testers so while this is how it ideally should uh, look not from a delivery perspective what has happened is it's become two pyramids one where you are managing all the 15 manual testers and then another one where you're managing these three automation and leads not lead definitely lead is assisting or you're managing the automation test engineers a lot of challenges from the industry is where these two teams could not be in sync 
So if you don't have the manual and automation testers in sync, all that responsibility and all the challenge comes about for into your uh, bucket. And then now you're stressed up as to how do I do things? So what we are trying to talk about is not about a career shift of manual testers or automation, but understanding what we are doing in automation world and how manual testers can start involving. Okay, now from a manual testing perspective, let us also start talking about tools team. What are the different tools? Can you all mention what tools have we used in manual testing? Please put them in the chat. Um, what tools? Have we used for manual testing? I want to start listing them down and I want to talk about automation tools also that you've come across and not that we want to differentiate or anything just that how strong is our awareness with market. There I go I start getting a few and while you're answering that I believe I could also take a poll question team. I think this is the easiest one to start with if you remember or not. I will create a few more polls team and I'm going a little slow to begin with. I would definitely want to um, be it be more interactive. So yes, I'm getting a few uh, sets of information on the manual tools. What are the team? And please can you start uh, also publishing the poll? I just launched one on your screen. You can click one of the option team. I will add a few more polls in a few minutes, but just just to get started. All right, there you go. I'm going to type it in. Maybe you're not seeing it on my screen yet. What I'm getting, I'm seeing QC, which is quality center and which has also become now ALM, right? And then we have Jira, right? Sorry. We have, okay, Bugzilla, sure. We have LM, we have Atlassian tools. So Jira, Bugle, Bugzilla are all Atlassian tools, right? Um, no, Jira, sorry, Atlassian tools. Uh, what was the other Atlassian tool? Zypher, mm. MTM, Microsoft Test Management, Manual Testing Tool, MTM. What else, team? Qtest, Rally version one wow there's so many and team i've got about 73 percent of you uh voted in can i get a few more votes in please did i miss anything from what i mentioned i'll also share the screen once i close this polls Okay, let me close this poll then and uh, share the results. So team, 80% um, of you are currently with us as members and that's great. Thank you so much because I see a very large participation and that's one thing I personally wanted to ensure that I improve within IT Learn where we get more and more members joining these webinars. And I do understand with this today's world significantly things have changed in our lifestyle uh, more in terms of let me hide this um, on how we do things and we want everything in a touch of a button. We've got easy learning options and we cannot focus so much on programs which are long and that is why I wanted to ensure we also come up with this weekend trainings for most of you who have a specific need where you could um, implement it quickly rather than having to go through an entire program. So let's talk about, you know, there's so many manual testing tools and I think all that they're trying to do is it's very simple team, right? Their goal is to, you know, um, write, manage, report, run, manually tests isn't that that is what 
these are trying to do everyone with me team now let's talk about some manual testing tools also i'm not sharing my screen oh why okay now sorry i think after the poll great so i've written those tools down and i was kind of mentioning that from a goal perspective all that we're trying to use these tools are to be able to write manage report and run tests that is what we are doing and there are so many SaaS products that i'm not sure you will start seeing and i mean we'll start seeing in the training that you're also aware that you can um uh, do things so what is SaaS team software as a service or maybe solution uh, and where they're charging them per use um, per license fees and so on now team quickly let's also talk about the world of automation tools what are the ones that you have come across in the side of automation exactly and SaaS tools um, we'll talk about those two yes source labs browser stack perfect what else and team it's already almost half an hour uh, we have we've got into the subject as per in terms of what we're trying to do we've started to analyze now in terms of manual tools and different automation tools now automation tools team let's go uh, check that list out okay great we got to start selenium sure qtp slash uft right now catalon perfect studio recorder protractor mm -hmm. what else load runner uh-huh Sure, J meter to then postman coded UI APM. What else? Team, I'm looking at your chat and writing it. It's so easy for me. Robot, there's nothing called robot or robotics. This okay, C test. Did I miss anything, team, from what you've been mentioning? There's there's robot frameworks. Yep, there is SOAP UI. What else, team? How about CI CD? Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, nice. Maven, sure. Let's put Eclipse also with it. GitHub, Bamboo, spell it right. Sonar cube. Sonar cube is uh, with a Q, right? Cube. And anything else, team? And we're going to get into the code levels very soon. Uh, but just thought, let's list down some. And even if we have not kind of completed everything, we can come back and uh, keep introducing them into it. But primarily, there's a whole array of things, isn't it? now apart from this we want people to have other skills like what what could be the other skills that you typically see in your team's team what do you ask them don't you ask something like bdd yeah html skills perfect i like that um and maybe even bdd i, was, I didn't know why i wanted sql perfect see CSS, sure, cascading style sheet. What else? Just at least the basics of it, right? Why not XML also? 
and maybe JSON formats, SQL, databases. Selenium IDE is a good question. Mm, when I say Selenium, we'll say IDE and the um, web driver, everything. In here, JavaScript, yeah. API, sure. ATDD, acceptance test driven development. Excel, perfect. Of course, Word and PowerPoint too. Linux, there you go. Mac too, then Windows will assume is by default. G Drive, so nice. Postman I have already used above shell scripting. There we go. Thank you, team. And like GitHub, there are so many other you know SVN tools. Um, SVN or version controlling team. XPath, sure. I think that is a good one. I will put special stars for this right now. <laughs> other skills. Core Java. Hmm. That gets tricky now. Now, uh, if maybe we should put that in here then. Java J unit test ng. Now you spent, let us say, the last six months working in Java J unit test ng with Selenium web driver, building all the automation frameworks. You did um, a little bit of uh, Maven, Eclipse, Jenkins, GitHub. And then suddenly you have a project or your customer wants you to then get into C sharp or Python. Not C. I miss C though. Hmm. Or I don't know Ruby on Rails. I don't know PHP. Um, so how do you then adapt? It becomes challenging and these skills are important team. So core programming in general is essential. But from my perspective, we are in a different world. We should never ever. This is my thumb rule team when it comes to automation. Uh, what color is this pen? Let me do it here itself. We should never ever mix automation testing into like a dev thing. It should not be given a cycle like a dev cycle. It should be more plug play plug play make changes do a little bit do a little bit and it should be progressive and that's a very very keyword team and we'll keep talking about them you need to have this um, where did I write ERA and all those I wrote a lot of content already we are clocking to we need them to be robust frame for robust and what did I uh, say team they should be slowly progressive. We should be able to progress them slowly. Because the most important thing is your ROI. And that's your return on investment. So when, how, what will you get at the end is very critical. And this becomes your plan overall. So as a QA leader, we need to know exactly what is happening in the team on a daily basis. You having to estimate uh, timesheets say that, okay, this project, it's a two weeks assignment or three weeks. How much will we dig further? And then we are burdened with all these tools. And don't you think that in today's market, at least if you have a dozen in this list, you would get into more of a zone. Uh, with what industry wants that's where that's what they're asking for team um, There is a hand raised. Can I get it in the chat, please? Unless there's an issue that you're facing. Okay, we could all right, so Then what is it that we want to do? From an automation testing perspective Where we have a lot of things team we have activities of manual testing We have performance we have uh, web and mobile app testing in performance stress load uh, you know concurrent uses all those uh, we have web services testing backend testing api and so on 
um, and then we have regression testing okay now please note that all our focus in what we will do essentially uh, at least through this weekend is going to be on one area and that's our regression testing it's very tough to uh, analyze and see how come regression testing is being so much in demand and especially with tools like uh, you know selenium or uft and catalon and you know all these tools how are they getting into things sure smoke testing is also smoke testing is a small part of regression testing team okay regression testing is the entire thing now why is regression testing being focused so much i'll tell you very simple let us think this is the application okay from a functionality perspective all that you're seeing here as boxes maybe different modules within this app okay and from a regression testing its most important criteria is has it covered each and everything in here okay now that's a functional execution when you talk about manual testing of course that is exactly what we do too and in the meanwhile we keep introducing the other components like you know what we're talking about now the performance uh, mobile app web services and so on into it as part of we want to do these here we want to do this here i want to do this here i want to do this here somewhere in the applications or the third party apis we are doing correct so regression testing big testing becomes one of the key areas which is doing the bulk of things team so your bulk of activities are going to happen in the regression testing and you have plug and play as need be and as we progress and i'm not saying giving any low uh, priority to them just the fact that this is overall conclusive so if we have now focusing on regression testing i have three simple tools to do um, that we can talk about one is our selenium then we have our hp uft and catalon let us assume that these are the three most popular ones right now in regression testing arena um, the reason we are focusing on selenium is very simple team it's got a great trend it's got it is open source and uh, we can uh, start looking at a lot of implementations that i've already done on it from a uft perspective this is one of the tools that i've admired and loved over a long period of time hp quick test professional version 9 onwards and i have just been amazed at how this product still is so good and i've just done recently one of those small sessions on it and i was so happy to see that everything works what we need we've gone all the way from uft and built our own selenium frameworks in selenium reinvented the whole wheel just to come back to uft and see that everything is built in features everything is built in you need to know what to do where to do yes you can and that is where i focus a lot do a lot of additional vb scripting and customize and develop frameworks custom rather than using all the inbuilt actions and so on that's a great thing but the concept that everything is built in it's like having selenium ide plus selenium web driver plus uh, a few other reporting tools all into one and catalon is something more new into the market i've seen it i've worked on it i don't have a great opinion on it it's um because it's it's just recreating what same selenium or uft is trying to do in a different way but it's got momentum so the reason i am focusing on selenium team is very simple once you get the basics of this automation you would understand how these two also work all right now let's quickly talk about how we go from a manual to an automation perspective and how things work so team from a manual testing we are working as humans and for us you know it's simple if you're just given a few instructions we can do it some of the humans are smart some of the humans are not so smart so a delivery one out here is much better but my delivery two that you're getting from your second qa engineer is not at the same level why though they use the same excel sheet 
to look at that manual test scenario and build it. They still are differing. Why? Because they use their own certain amount of thinking. That you know what? I believe there is something different here. And maybe that same level of creativity is not there for the next one. And more questions out here. So when you look at an application under test, and when you're doing whatever kind of testing, web services regression, you want to be able to focus and say, how confident am I from my team perspective that I can say, okay, things are working fine. Let's move it to the next cycle. So that is a very critical thing, team, acceptance. So should I accept D1 and should I be able to reject D2? That's your challenge in manual testing. That is number one. So instructions are there in Excel, instructions are there in Excel, same Excel. Then why the difference? because the way we think when it comes to automation testing tool number one there is no concept called self thought or idea or oh you know what a uh, eureka or yahoo moment that i've got something some kind of an uh, this is i'm trying to draw a bulb team just in case you're wondering <laughs> what i'm drawing here so there is nothing that will point and say i've got a bright idea absolutely not so what is it? It is nothing but a dumb system that follows a few steps. So it doesn't matter if D1 executes it. It doesn't matter if D2 executes it because your automation tool will go about doing the same thing. So now in this case, what happened? The Excel that we have here in the automation is almost the same here and almost the same here. All right. Now, how does a typical test case look look like team? I, I was trying to put some things together from previous ones. Let's see if um, any of this has something. I have my Eclipse ready as well. We're going to run through a few of these uh, two. Uh, the flow is team. I'm not going to start with Selenium ID. We're going to go jump. Um, so I'm here, it's a lot here. I'll definitely let me save this. Uh, this is weekend training. Ooh, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. Sorry, I make that buzzing sound when I have just nothing to do and on the screen. Okay, uh, focus, training focus. Yes, like I said there, but uh, where is it that I said? Uh, here, right? So I don't want to talk a lot about Selenium Web IDE team. We'll focus directly on Selenium Web Driver. Okay. And there are some uh, prereqs will guide you. You need to install and practice offline. All right. Everything that we would we're going to do here, team. Or you can take a detailed other training content, uh, live training content to practice on. So this is a fast flow team. This is not something I want you to do anything. Put everything aside. Just take notes. That's it don't worry about practice or anything i would love to give exercises team i would love to have you do certain activities maybe we'll try and approach that tomorrow and i'm just seeing we are about not even one fourth into today's session uh, but once we get into the code we'll keep flowing from there it'll get very intellectual for us what else do we have um now i was opening this huh let's see is there anything here all right now forget about what I have on the top in terms of what is DDF or out here or test data and so on team. Just focus in terms of how a simple test case will look at. And when we look at manual testing, maybe it will have a few more details as expected or and so on. But primarily, I want to do something on an application let us select mortgagecalculator.org and it prints out 
it sorry it we enter home value we enter loan amount we enter interest rate click on calculate very fine close browser when you look at these steps team you are primarily saying that how does this application behave manual or automation is the next thing but how does it behave that we could have it work on uh, understanding what we should do so we're going to go to the application enter a few values click on compare loan types and make sure that we get in the right repayment summary that is our criteria here is how a typical step looks like now the biggest challenge when we look at um, uh, any manual or an automation test team there are a couple of additional details that we need to do if a human is given a task of saying that you know what go look at this excel and make sense of it all right all right the human is able to kind of get the idea and say okay test case one step one is go to this application i'll enter these details okay sure click on how much do i enter okay home value is there somewhere uh, what is this i don't know what it is but maybe it is in test data so we are able to understand based on what we see here because we have a certain pre-memory a pre-notion of how things will work but when it comes to the same thing when it comes to selenium all right or any other automation tool it lacks in that capability these steps are not sufficient for it to execute it needs more details because it does not know certain things and the only two things that selenium really requires team is actually three information three sets of information what to do where to do and any test data or information that you want to additionally provide these are the three important information that you need to give if an automation has to happen manual tester with this information no problem automation engineer needs to provide more detail so that is your most important activity team uh, in terms of understanding where automations are getting into automation engineers automation needs three more in three information at least three sets of information and what are those three team let me raise this drawing what are those three that i mentioned what we need to do that is the action or the command that we want to give to selenium that go do this and the next one is where i need to perform that action so we are only talking about web-based applications in here right team so it's look at the simplicity of what we're trying to do so where now see human no problem he will go and search our home value is here our down payment is here or he or she please sorry um and they know where to search but okay let me step back a second and just mention this when we are trying to do some activity on a web-based application i need to know what you want me to do like okay you want me to type something here okay tell me the amount i will put it here uh, next what you want me to do you want me to click on this person and say this is 10 percent okay i will do that and then you want me to click on this compare loan types yes i'll click and i get a banner is this what you wanted or not so it is all about following a series of instructions these instructions we also have to say where and this is the element identification in selenium we talk everything about elements and there are different ways of identifying elements something like id name I'll just mention few team uh, link link text or link partial partial link test CSS or class uh, tag sometimes tag uh, or you know forget the other ones main ones X path now your other one is your data this could be your test data info like a username or what you want to put here in these fields that becomes the other important aspect once you have these three sets of information 
you are all set with automation. Now, how do I give these sets of information in an Excel? Forget about getting to that extent, but let's try and understand how does a simple automation script look? At this point, is it okay if I switch to Eclipse and just run through a few codes that we've been working on, team? It'll be fun to look at what's happening and then we will come back to it. <clears throat> All right, great. So where are we? Now, team, I've taken the latest Selenium September batch. We're still progressing in it. We've completed a little linear framework, functional decomposition, keyword driven, and now we are doing hybrid framework with page object page factory. We're still progressing there. So let me close all of these. I don't need these. And let's start at the very beginning. I think it was Selenium live training project two. Now, where am I? What am I doing everyone? You are a QA leader, let us assume. And you are not someone who's yet acquainted with Eclipse. Can I just, and team, the beauty of this online program, uh, right now, I know it's too much one way, but if you are interacting, you're interacting with me directly. So it doesn't not have to be with anyone else. So please use that advantage to chat with me at least in, in it. Okay, in the go to webinar. My question is team, how many of you have seen Eclipse? Or le let me ask the other way. How many of you have never worked on Eclipse beyond a certain things? An answer no saying to me that, you know what, I've never done much on Eclipse. Maybe I've seen it, maybe I've seen developers, but not too much. Anyone? I've got five, six, seven, eight. And team, thank you so much for the participation. It's really, I'm glad that I have a good crowd for a weekend. So it makes things very interesting too. Okay, so not. No problem. Let me walk through at a high level and then we will dig through slowly. I will make sure team by end of day tomorrow, you will see certain comfort level in Eclipse. Okay, that is what we will work uh, focus on. Now, what happens? What is Eclipse team? Very simple. It's called an IDE. IDE is an integrated development environment. Now, Java is there. When I write a Java program, it is all about it will look like this. My Java program will look nothing but like this. This is it. Now, when we're looking at such a simple code and I can just go to command line and say Java and run this program, Java if and whatever, hi team, hi team, and dot class. So whatever dot Java classes that we create in here, is as simple as this and we'll go through the code a little bit team. Then what is the point of an IDE? So integrated development environment makes your Java code do three things team. Um, one, it lets you organize everything nicely. All right, so it is almost like a folder structure. See, left side you have like a tree structure. You can click on, drill down, and start seeing things one after the other. It is as simple as that. That is one reason. The second is that uh, the IDE helps you to do better, faster coding. How? It has something in terms of when you write, if you do errors, it will help you to fix them. It will give you suggestions and it will give you uh, good error reports out here. And uh, third and most important thing team uh, is in terms of it works great in an overall CI to CD fashions. Okay, so these tools can talk to other tools. So if I write code here, I can check this code into a remote folder. Google Drive also is okay, but again, it's not really recognizes code, but GitHub or other SVN tools, you could keep checking in your code as well. So it lets you do all these three things that you cannot typically do. So this is organize, this is better coding and do a lot of continuous integration, continuous delivery through it. So that's why we use an integrated development environment. In that, Eclipse is one of the most popular open source tools. So go to eclipse.org and download this. And installations and all team, uh, once you're getting hands on, then go to this training that is already there as videos, most of about 22 days so far. 
uh, and start watching maybe from day two, day three, day four, where we start doing Eclipse. I walk through everything. Now, what all do I need to run my code? Let's put those. Automation code in on Selenium. Okay. I'll keep it very simple team one. Yes, we want to have a Eclipse ID. That is what we are using. We will use Java. Maybe we will also see test ng or J unit. We're going through multiple codes team, so that will be interesting for us. Um, to run an automation code to run an automation code. What am I trying to do? I'm getting lost a little bit. Sorry. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Oh, yes. What else do we need? Selenium web driver. Then we need a Chrome driver, Gecko driver, and other Java jar. What are what is Java jar team? Full form of jar is Java archived resource. Right, it's like a zip folder. Just assume it's like a zip folder, but for Java programs, where um, you combine everything and you try and get them for reusable execution. So what we do, team, is in the folder that I have. Let me kind of walk through there. I think here how huh? it is this drawing. So you got the point, team. ID. Why why are we using two? A one organize code. When I say organize code team, it is write, edit, maintain, run all of these things. You can do better coding. You can write things better because of suggestions, faster, easier access to and then the fact that you know it talks to so many things in the ci cd world talks to other apps too so that's the reason team and i want you to very prominently realize why we are doing certain things now what are the concept of java and jar let me explain that to you and when then we will run a few things and i will show you that on there Tick, tick, tick. Let me take this. So, um, what happened, team? Java is like a core programming language, and it knows how to do things. When I say programming language, it is nothing but it is a bunch of instructions. Some says do A, B, C, D, but then then it will come a step E where it says, you know what, you do here this way or this way, and then it says somewhere that I want to keep on doing this repeatedly or I want to go back here, I want to go there. That is what is a programming language team. Basically taking English-like instructions from a human and running it on our machine. That is all that a programming language does. So Java as a core has all these things like if statement, for, while, uh, select case, methods, and so on. Uh, but when it comes to the other providers there are different users of java so for example we have at Vercasa a product called anyot which is a very um, well-built automation tool specifically for manual testers now for anyot if it has to work it knows that it has this but there is a packaged of all that what that anyot does into a jar file team and that if you have you can run everything so whenever you have to use any odd you need to put that into your java library and use it the same with selenium web driver and said selenium says that if you want to work with web driver what is a web driver in your application let us say there is a chrome in your system browser selenium web driver lets you connect to that browser and work with it 
now if selenium web driver needs to be handled within java i need that jar file now if i'm running my tests on chrome i also will need to know how the driver file will look if i want to run or do something with let us say reading and writing excel files then i will do uh, something with apache poi or jdbc or you have some and everything comes in as a jar file so look at jar as more of a, a reusable library team whenever you want it you get it so then the question comes why doesn't java have everything to uh, you know load it load it all just that there are thousands and thousands probably even more hundreds of thousands of these jars publicly available and it becomes uh, impossible to manage that so you need to know what to use when all right so let us say we creating a new project in java all i'll do at that time is make sure my drivers are all put in one place so i've downloaded a selenium server standalone from seleniumhq.org there's apache poi there's junit there is a hamcrest core there is a chrome driver and whatever i want in my what we're working on i'll keep implementing those now in here what have i done there is okay eclipse and all this so far done uh, team i'll take another 10 15 minutes and then we'll take a break okay i want to run a few programs a simple java program like hi team is there out here now do you notice the same program when i opened it in a simple notepad it looked this way very bland and this is what it is and now when i look at it here there's more bold there's coloring there's line numbers and that's what a eclipse id does i do not want you all to ever get confused too much on all these brilliant options that are there at the beginning this we expose and learn as we go along there's also something called as perspective or how we see like do we want to see this window here this here this here but you know i want you to focus on these three team as much as you can keep your package explorer on left high team and here i'll show you how we can create a new workspace project also but let's run a few code and see what happens so at this point i just have a simple program what is this program let us read through it uh, and team i don't think i'll do justice by going details and explaining what is a public static or void and so on as the opportunity comes i will but i will focus on the core of our automation and try and get there so there's a lot that we need to cover but let us understand the construction of how things are built in java for us it is very simple we will start with talking about a name to that class that becomes exactly that name that you will see and the extension is dot java so if i see this name is high team and the same thing should be also there in the code where is it i think here source high team see that's the name there high team and dot it's a java java file okay so when you um save this it has to match the same names have to be there so if i change this you would notice a red line coming in it primarily says that hey you know what your code is not correct and this is the other advantage when we spoke about eclipse id and how it helps you do better coding is it will give you recommendation it will give you a pointing saying that hey you did a mistake if i do the same in a, in a notepad i have no absolute clue to it that is the only simple reason i mean that is that is one of the strong reasons that everyone uses ide team very rarely you see someone going into the code and doing unless they have simple small changes to do all right so this is critical where your class name here is linked with your file name okay that's a simple construction now every java class should have a main method remember that main method is where things start to execute and what we see is the curl brackets is nothing but saying open curl brackets is start of a block of code close is the end of the block of a code so within my whole program called high team i have a main method and these are the lines what is public static void not yet but let's talk about what does this print statement do simple 
Java print statements that whatever you print here goes to a place called console. So quick execution will show us that I've arrived here so far. I love automation. Um, let's do hands on. And now all I did is to that code, I made a small change and doing it. So team, if I'm making a change in this, I hope my team won't mind. I keep a copy of the old ones for sure, but I still, that's fine. It's not a bad change to have. All I did is at this time, what did I do team? I changed my code and I'm going to save this file and I'm going to click on this green icon called execute. When I click on this, that is when the execution happened initially, but now it's going to do it with those changes. So that is all about it, team. Starting from line one to line 10,000, we go about doing and writing. So what is this high team do now? Um, I think it does exactly the same, but if you notice, can someone tell me the difference? High team and high team two. Let's remove this and assume that this wasn't there. Do you see any difference between this tab and this tab? Everyone. So I have my high team in code one in the first tab, the next one in the second tab. Are you feeling tired team? Class name is different. That's true. I didn't notice. Thank you. What else? Line spacings, right? There's six lines of code and this is 12 lines of code. So from a line count perspective, it does not matter, but uh, how well is it readable and so on uh, we keep a close look now what else did i do my basic java okay so it's still another simple code let's run this i'm trying to slowly get into a selenium web driver code team and simple java class nothing much just one statement and then i have something called as gdf java there we go now here is where we start to look at applications and what we can do on it. So for example here, it is a small simple code that is going to youtube.com and going to send this keys, blah, blah, blah. And that's about it. How is this code developed and what is this new import statement that I see here? Do you remember I was saying that about the jar when explaining that you need to use them as and when. In here, we started to use the concept of our Selenium web driver. This web driver gives us the control to point to the application under test. Let us say this is my application. When I say web driver, my driver, and my driver is new Chrome driver, which is open here. Whenever I say my driver, it is automatically pointing to here and it has total control on it. It can do whatever it wants. How did that happen? Let me speak about it. Within Java, we have concept of variables team. Variable is nothing but, and we'll discuss variables uh, soon. Um, it has a name and it has a value. It's like your contact list phone number. For your friends, you'll not just put their names in your contact list, right? You'll also write the name. So whenever you say that, you know, I want to call Adam or I want to call Steve or I want to call Kishore, you just pick up that name. You don't have to remember the number and then that number will come out. When it comes to an object, it is a little bit more complex. Think of it like a cube where it's got plenty of details. It's got n number of um, information into it. We need to say, okay, what is the size of it? What is the width of it? What is the height of it? Color of it and so on. It's like, for example, having instead of just a phone number, you want a contact, uh, uh, entire contact details. So contact details is first name, last name, organization, email, password, ad address, location, zip, all of these, right? So you can't put that into one variable. So you put it into a structure where you have all the details about it. And that basically becomes your objects team. We will talk a little bit about oops and how we get there, uh, but my driver is pointing there. Okay, now for this web driver to be recognized, we need these four statements. Why, what happens if it is not there? Let us evaluate. And I want you to maybe, even if you don't get enough time to put hands on 
uh, into what we're doing team i want you to at least uh, be inquisitive look at these codes run them make changes or see what's happening as and when you get time team now see we have other syntax errors we call them as syntax errors there are two types of errors we will come across team syntax error is wrote wrong can't understand what you say what is a runtime error it ran wrong code no syntax has no syntax issues but problem when executing okay now your syntax error is basically a um, way for java to tell us that human i don't understand what you're saying so can you be more explicit so in here whenever you see a red underline you can take your mouse over it and it says that listen for this web driver to be recognized you need to import web driver org dot open qa where will it be importing from team don't worry as of now it is already there in the reference libraries i've imported the way we import is very simple um, we go to that project wherever we're working on see there are multiple projects right let me minimize this is the project we're working on or seeing and go to the properties and we go to java build path and then i can add the ones that i want so click on add external jars go to the drivers add what i want it will basically let me start working with so and so uh, things team whatever it needs to interact that goes into your referenced library so this is your java project let me explain once again i have not created a project i will but i just wanted to quickly show you code this is your project team name of the project okay this is called your workspace where you will have multiple projects okay under workspace you can have more than one project this is where all your code individual codes are written programs you can have different folders under it structure it is just how you want to maintain it and then we have the libraries libraries as to what is required to run in this there is something called as a jre system library that is the java runtime environment inbuilt so whatever is typically needed i'm sorry team excuse me uh, typically needed to execute a simple java program is all in here reference libraries are user added so we want it in our program and we added it and if these were not there in here then it would not say import web driver it will say i did not recognize what do i mean if i delete this go to properties java build path build path and here let me do something here and add these jars again how do i add external jars add external jars go to this driver so i need all of okay so when i don't have what is it that i mean to say now i don't have anything in my reference libraries hello why is it there build path i didn't delete remove apply okay so removed now see if i take my mouse over it says i don't even recognize what web driver is earlier it said import that so your import statements that here are nothing but saying yes you've got that entire java build path all the libraries associated but in that what you want because there's so much there right i explicitly tell me and that now again i referenced it i take my mouse over it and says import this so that statement will automatically get added and that's the goodness about um eclipse team it helps you to do better coding now i have under underline under chrome driver i'm just trying to eliminate the issues chrome driver is a subclass of web overall selenium web driver team i am giving you a lot of concepts and information in like bits and pieces i hope you're absorbing these sessions will get recorded you can repeat them this is a great summary for what we're doing so 
web selenium web driver is like the main thing okay which interacts with any web browser but now we know that a chrome browser is different from a firefox which is different from a safari opera and so on right they all built differently they also work differently applications in fact look differently also sometimes we are getting much better these days about you know but trying to be more cross browser friendly uh, in appearance but it is been so with so uh, such kind of a diversity of browsers and then how do we make one web driver to handle everything no so we have one for chrome web driver then we have a gecko driver and so on for opera for safari so selenium hq.org is your source where you would be able to access all of these latest ones so whenever here is what either way i think team if i have if i can get onto a new system anytime i can download eclipse selenium web driver java jdk start installing and set it up within 15 minutes 20 minutes okay now here you have something called as a download and under download on seleniumhq.org are the links to all the latest ones it is the main ser selenium server that is what will let us run the test selenium for web driver and then you have the individual web drivers for different browsers gecko for mozilla google chrome opera edge microsoft and so on okay now with all of these in here you basically this is where i download it and i put it up there now what let's understand this code and how is it different from the earlier java code and what will it do it has a print statement but it has one thing more saying that my driver web driver so if i change this to my d it is basically a reference so wherever web driver is there i can go and change it to my d it says okay now that's fine i do have one more issue on line 17 it says buy i'll take my mouse over and import this it is basically saying how do i want to recognize the elements and this by will tell us the process team by using id name css class path link text partial link text um, x path okay uh, what are we doing here the first statement is getting this my d to link to web driver second is something called system dot set property it's very simple team it is a property for we're looking for webdriver.chrome.driver your selenium web driver will search for that it needs to know where that driver file is so we gave the path to that okay in your local machine when i say my d equals new chrome driver it will launch a chrome driver an empty one when i say my d dot navigate to youtube.com it will go to that website and it will maximize that then it is going to find an element by using an xpath out here and send these keys and end the test let us see if this works as is team so i've saved it and i'm just running this right now the start of my test some bunch of commands in red i see a browser launching it does go to youtube.com i did not see it mag oh yeah there you go it's gone full screen and that's about it it's type blah blah and nothing much so the whole importance of this code is the fact that i'm sorry one second sorry team how simple can you write a code to start handling an application now the same thing you could also do it on selenium id but we don't use id primarily because it's only to learn some basic concepts but web driver is where we will focus all that we will do now is do enhanced versions of this and it is not just about what steps we have to do it is also about identifying them so remember i was talking about those three things that we require to be able to work on automation that is what to do where to do and any additional data so the action what to do is here for example send keys or maximize only few of them right now the data that i want to send is also here now where should i find to send the keys that is specified here first when i say my d it is automatically going till this browser okay when it launches already my d is out here connected to chrome driver correct on line 13 
now it is going to that browser any questions team i'm almost done with the first part so um and when i say x path find element by x path so what it is basically doing the next activity is on this browser keep on searching and finding an element that has an x path so and so and once it gets that information it can execute it now what if i just say that you know what i want to send keys um click click and just execute what happens then so anything red does not mean error team anything black does not mean good this is just um, how things are getting executed what happened team what did it do it did blah blah and then click click why did it do it one after the other why did it not do it um, you know override it and that's because you need to be specific if you want to clear that what you wrote earlier then you say now comes one of your first automation steps that if you want to do some step then you say where you are doing so my d dot find element as soon as you write my d dot your eclipse id helps you to uh, come up with what you what are the options that you have so i'm saying finding my element i'll say by dot using what here are the list of different methods xpath tag partial link text id name and so on be using xpath now i don't know the xpath no problem i'm decent at copy paste so i'll just copy this which worked earlier and use it now now i've gone till what where this element is now i want to perform an action on it and that is as soon as i hit dot you would notice what kind of an activities you can perform on an element on a web page and all we're doing is you're not trying to click that i would like to clear that so if there's a data before it i want to clear it and then enter new data and if this works then each time it should be entering new data for me um Ot, ot. and let's see if this works now and see each time it's leaving a browser open so team um, i'm almost kind of done with the first session any questions please and i will see you all in about 10 15 minutes i'll restart the session and you can join back i will continue it on the same link um, as i it'll be hardly 10 minutes for me to switch you all into the new one so but team i will request if you're a non-member then please go ahead and um, join in and you can welcome back to attend these sessions uh, one challenge that i found meanwhile looks like everything ran fine but it was too fast for me to look at and let me slow it down by adding a sleep statement let it go a little slower two seconds between each actually i want to do it after typing give two seconds then clear then again typing give two seconds then clear then again type yeah now why do i have a thread dot sleep there's a, a red line on it what is thread dot sleep team it's one of the simple java commands which lets says that java this thread whatever is running is considered like a thread that thread let us put it to a sleep mode for 2000 milliseconds so how do you know that this is the statement now that i've told now you'll know how will you forget after this you keep using this now you'll know so it's all about getting exposed and knowing team so see this how do you know that this is the format now you know find element open bracket by dot same thing practice slowly look at things we taking things in a faster track you know thread dot sleep is basically giving an instruction saying that hey i want this system to sleep for two seconds not system this program before it goes to the next step that's a java command now the challenge with java is that it's a very powerful tool programming language and it has the ability to interact with multiple other devices applications or programs or what you have on your machine so it can cause interruptions especially when you're sleeping and something else is interrupting into it and all of these have a chance to throw issues or errors so java want to know that there is a chance that errors may happen especially when you use certain things and for that is why we use this um, throws um, you know just an exception there is a chance that it can throw an exception 
Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about exceptions, how we handle them, but just that I need it here, so I'm using it. Why did I do that enhancement in the script? Only for me to get a better visual idea on how this script is running. So do you understand how the team, your automation team in the background is actually going to be executing or how they're going to be working on? They're primarily doing this repeated tasks. Now this looks fine. So what about if I go about writing a lot of steps like that consistently in that same fashion for everything that I see in an application? Why not, right? But then there is, you know, you cannot maintain. There is no efficiency. You lose an ERA and that is what we will see how we can do better. And here I'm going to do my D dot close. I'm going to quickly close that and get out after that. Share on set property. Okay, so executions all about writing, executing, writing, executing. So team, um, assuming no questions, if there are, please do let me know. Or, or else it's 11.36 a.m. my time. Shall we meet at 11.50 a.m. my time? Which is 1.50 central, 2.50 p.m. Pacific. Please share on set property. I will maybe once I join back you. What is set property doing? Is it what happens is your web driver will look and hunt for this property that is set that has to have a value. This is the one it will go and refer to when it wants to get the Chrome driver. So for this, it wants to know where is that located in that entire Chrome driver exe. The small uh, plugin file is there. We already downloaded it and we put it under our drivers file here. So it's just giving a link that way it can interact with it. Let us say it does not find that. OK, and I say it's Chrome driver 1.exe and I run this code. What happens now? It will throw a runtime error team. It says that you know what the driver executable does not exist at this path, so it cannot launch it and it gives me a good analysis that OK DDF 1.java line 13. There's an issue there. All right, great. Uh, so team, I'll see you back at 11.15, about 12 minutes from now. Thank you all. Bye now. Take care. And team, for all the non-members, please make sure you complete your uh, formalities with the pricing and um, join back. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Same link. Same link, team. Bye.